Uh, hello. Hello, he says. What's so good about it? That's what I'd like to know. Uh, perfume, please. I'd like some scent. Sorry, love. We don't deliver. <laughs> hey, listen, Robert. Listen, this geezer here. He says I want some perfume, right? Scent. I said, sorry, love. We don't deliver. <laughs> you don't even get it. Yes, I do. It's a pun. Scent. Scent. Oh, you don't know how to kill a joke. <laughs> what sort you want? Uh, well, I was hoping Smell for... Smell that. What's that like? Somebody's neck? <laughs> it's French. Well, half French on my mother's side. Yeah, well, it's very nice. Look, love, I... this neck seems more love bites than you've had conversations. So don't you start, all right? Red Roar it's been, so you can shut up for a start. <laughs> Who's it for, then, this scent? My mother. <laughs> How old are you? Thirty. Thirty. I bet I'm the first single woman you've ever spoken to. <laughs> and I'm hardly listening. <laughs> Some scent for Mum, then. Some embalming solution for you. And I shouldn't, it's cruel. Well, you don't think it's a suitable thing to give one's mother, then? Oh, it depends, doesn't it? On the occasion. What is it, birthday? No, I fancy her. <laughs> Best thingy? Well, I'm, I'm hoping to persuade her to come to bed with me, and I thought uh, you know, a bottle of scent to make things along with it. It's usually the way with kind of stuff, isn't it? Your mother? Well, of course, she's not, she's not my real mother. Uh, my real mother died when I was very young, so I've always lived with my grandmother. <laughs> but she used to go out to work during the day, so I came to look upon Grandad as my real mother. That's her, or, or him, that I want the scent for. Well, I'm not even serving you. You want men's toiletries over there? So? Sal? Why did you set fire to your school, Sal? Try to tell me. <laughs> All right. You don't want to talk about it? That's OK. We won't talk about it. It's fine by me. We'll talk about something else. Why did you set fire to the disco, Sal? <laughs> to know. Don't care, it was boring. Oh, come on, Sal! That's stupid! You're not giving yourself a chance. You say you don't like discos. Didn't I see a Bucks Fizz post on your bedroom wall? Your mum tells me you're crazy about Bucks Fizz. My mum done nothing. She hates me, my mum. Is that why you set fire to herself? <laughs> Does not set fire to her? Good. Well done, Sal. That's right. Now, I knew you didn't, but I wondered if you did. <laughs> Well, it's not the sort of thing you're going to forget, is it? Setting fire to bleed mum. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, well, is it? I've said all right. You're a repressed, withdrawn adolescent. I'm, I've got a degree, so shut up. Only from the poly. Yes, only from the poly. That's right, which I might add is one of the few public buildings in this city that you haven't burnt down. I did. You did not, Sal. I happen to know that Craig, a young black boy I supervised, burnt down the pond. Only the old bit. I did the extension. Yeah, well, it's nothing to be proud of, is it, Sal? Now, listen to me. I want to ask you a question. Do you know a young runaway called Scotty? Highly creative, taciturn, finds communication difficult. That's the one. <laughs> Could be one of a hundred, couldn't he? Well, he told me, with difficulty, that he burnt down the poly extension. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a wild night. A lot of claims got put in for that one. Hey, so can I scrounge a rolly off you? No. Sal, <laughs> listen to me. Try and understand what I'm saying. You're imaginative, you're lively, you're fertile, and you're inventive. And that's good, Sal. Very good. But also, you're tongue-tied, reticent, reserved, and aggressive. Bad, Sal. Now, I've been doing some research into your background, and I think I may have come up with some of the answers that we need. We need, Sal. It seems that all through your school days, you, a normal, healthy girl, were known as Fat Sal, the spotty spastic. <laughs> I wasn't. Kids can be very cruel, Sal. But so often they see the truth. You were, and are, 
Fat and Spotty. They call me Sandra. Yeah, but that wasn't your real name, was it, Fat yes, Sal? Yes, it was. Now, come on, Fat Sal, listen to me. No wonder you're angry. Of course you are. You're uneducated, you're unqualified, you're unemployable. You've got no possibility or prospects of work or any kind. Your life is a total mess. <laughs> but always remember, you're creative, you're lively, you're fertile and imaginative. I respect it. Don't worry, that's just Jimmy come for his appointment. We're breaking through here. We can wait. Now, come on, Sal, it's that hair. That hairstyle, you designed it yourself. It looks a total mess. Go get me a beer right at the icebox and be a pal. You mean be a human sacrifice? When was the last time you went to the Antarctic in Bermuda Shorts? Besides, I donated the contents of the Frigidaire to the Institute of Salmonella Research and Tomain Investigation <laughs> Domestic <laughs> Projects Division already. Why did they make of it? A fortune in tranquilizers. <laughs> boom, boom. You mean our Frigidaire is keeping the excitable from getting overexcited? The disillusion from being disillusioned by disillusionment? The neurotic from being obsessed by their own neurosis and helping the unacceptable to be accepted by accepting the unacceptable? You could put it that way. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> Well, what I want to know is, who the hell drank the beer? There's an alien being in possession of the fridge. Penicillin is creeping from the door. And the Jubilee cake. That's been resident since the Jubilee. Has cultivated a fashionable drug subculture with the appetite of an underprivileged vulture, and it's eating all the maggots from the floor. And if you think that's tasteless, there's more. There's spores emanating from the pores of the Christmas turkey. And what a Christmas that was! I was Santa Claus. 1964 was a hell of a year for Christmases. If we had a dishwasher, we could wash up the plate, eat regular meals, cause we wouldn't have to wait for the breakfast to solidify and get hard. If we had a TV with remote control, we could change the channel, it would give us a whole new Much fun. Say, it must be your turn to go to the John for me. <laughs> it's your turn to destroy the washing up. Then it must be your turn to fumigate the air conditioner. And your turn to go and burn the laundry and destroy the correspondence relating to all gainful employment in the last tax year. Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. <laughs> Hold it. There's no need to do any of that. No need to move. Sit back and relax. The building is on fire, and all these little inconveniences will be taken care of in due course. Can you smell the burning? It's getting close. Can you smell the burning? It's getting mighty close. Can you smell the burning? It's getting real close. Just stay cool and go get me a beer. Can you smell the burning? Out of the icebox. Can you smell the burning? And be a pal. Come in, um, 
Simon. Simon. Have a seat. Coffee, sir? Uh, yes, thanks very much. That voice? Yes, thanks very much. Huh? Shakespeare, isn't it? Huh? Classical training, all right? Uh, no, no, haven't been trained, no. Natural, is it? Yes. Yeah. What a gift, Simon. And Simon, have I got a gift for you. A real humdinger. Dinger. How's your um, Spanish, Simon? Uh, I don't speak Spanish. Uh, and uh, English? Yes. Yeah. And England? <laughs> well, it's a, it's a very important part in a very high-budget film that's being financed, actually, by the Pentagon. You'll be playing a Cuban terrorist who's been paid by the Russians to overrun the government of El Salvador. Salvador. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's a sort of... Um, drama doc. Drama documentary, yes. Hidden cameras, lots of handheld, very authentic. And it's been shot to look like a newsreel. Instead of being shown in the cinema, Simon, it's going to be shown on the television. In bits. Mm, on the news. Mm. That's novel. <laughs> Just novel. novel. <laughs> so, um, so I'm to play a Cuban terrorist who's being paid by the Russians to overthrow the government of El Salvador, yeah. and it's going to be shown in bits it's on the television news. news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other parts going? No other parts as such, Simon, because they're going to be using a lot of real people. You know, amateurs. Very Bill Forsyth. Very fashionable. <laughs> government troops will be real. <laughs> real troops? Isn't that a bit dangerous? No. <laughs> well, well, why don't they use real Cuban terrorists? Equity. Equity. Yeah, exactly. oh. <laughs> They'll be using blank bullets, I presume. <laughs> Good as. <laughs> Good as? Oh, they're very little. Tainsy. Well, I could get killed. Simon, you could get killed crossing that road out there. I nearly was this morning, wasn't I, Harriet? Yeah. We're talking about fame. I mean, what would James Dean be? What would James Dean be doing if he was alive today? Hey, guest spots on the Barbara Mandrell show if he was lucky. So when would shooting start? Uh, shooting's been going on for about a year, Simon. But you can just join in when you get there. <laughs> Yes, I did once, as a matter of fact. Down by the bridge. And don't call me love, I'm not your love. It's an expression. What? A stitch in time saves nine. That's an expression. You say it when, oh, when you want to be incredibly smug and boring. Mr Butcher, I know this is going to come as quite a shock, but... Boo! It might interest you to know, Mr Baker, that the word boo also constitutes the first three letters of the word boot. Yes, I did know that, but I must confess for the moment I'd forgotten. Yes, well, it's very easy to say that actually after you've been told. Actually, it was a bad memory that led me to fall in in the first place. Where was that? I told you, down by the bridge. I later fell in again by the little knot of plastic bags and scum, but the bridge was the first place. And it was your memory that did it? Yes, you see, I couldn't remember exactly how old I was when I first, you know, did it when I lost my, uh, what's the word? Duffel bag? Yes, that's right, duffel bag. Anyhow, I'd heard that when you drown, your whole life passes before you. So I thought, if I could drown myself up to the point where I discover what I wanted to know, and then swim ashore, I'd be all right. But it didn't work. Why not? I can't swim, that's the other thing I'd forgotten. I think the time has come for me to tell you, Mr. Baker, that I, too, once threw myself into this very canal because the girl I loved just wanted to be friends. Well, it's better than nothing, Mr. Butcher. I should, of course, point out, Mr. Baker, that it wasn't me that she just wanted to be friends with. There were many people that she would like to have made friends with, but she hated me. I once made a fool of myself over a girl. Oh, yes. I was lying on top of her and I was wearing a false nose and a spinning bow tie. <laughs> Completely forgotten to take them off. I remembered, by the way, what it was that you lost when you were younger but couldn't remember the word for. I bet it wasn't your duffel bag. I bet it was your virginity. That's right, it was. It was my virginity. I wouldn't mind, but it had my football kit in it. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> well, sir? Well, Charlie, it just isn't on. These documents will never pass. Look at this. Please let this man through. Signed Hitler. I mean, really. Seems all right to me, sir. No, man, it's written in English. Jerry's bound to tumble, and then we'll cover cartloads square between the neck. The question, surely, sir, is why the only totally blind officer we have gets the job of forger. <laughs> you heartless swine, Courier. You know perfectly well that man went blind recreating the minutest detail of a thousand Nazi documents. Oh, come off it, Charlie. We all know that's not the reason he went blind. All right, that's enough. <laughs> The only question to be discussed is escape. Morkins, you haven't spoken. Well, sir, I know some of the fellows think I'm cockeyed, and perhaps I am. But I'm the only chap in this room who can look in two different directions at the same time. Charlie? Well, sir, the main gate's here, and the British quarters are here, right? right? Mm -hmm. So what's to stop us dressing up as grand pianos and just walking out through the main gate? It's so simple, it's perfect. <laughs> I've worked out the minutest details, so of course, but the real credit must go to Miracle Morkins the Carpenter Miracle. Well, sir, it seemed to me that the first problem must be how to create a lightweight, easily assembled grand piano costume. <laughs> Gentlemen, meet Bertie the piano. <laughs> Dickens, tea chests, sir. This piano is made entirely out of tea chests. Now, my plan is to get a team of, say, ten highly skilled carpenters turning these out by the cartload. Besides that, we're going to need German money, papers, and plenty of sheet music. But, sir, even if we do get one or two men out of the gate, and I'm not saying Miracle hasn't done a ruddy cracking job, and all credit to him, but what then? Hmm? One, maybe two grand pianos, under cover of darkness, cross-country might stand a chance, but 60? Speaking English? Hell, oh, Jerry would never swallow it. I'm afraid he's right, Morgan. I've yet to see that Jerry had swallowed 60 pianos. <laughs> well, we can't just bloody sit here, can we, sir? Morkins, I'd like a word with you, chaps. Would you mind? <laughs> Look, Morkins, nobody's worked harder on this show than you, and, well, if anyone deserved a place on the first team, it's you, but I'm afraid I can't let you go. But, sir, I... You're a bastard, Morkins. We all hate you. Nobody wants you to escape. <laughs> Crazy fool's trying for it. What? <laughs> go for it, man. Go for it. Go, go. Yes, Rollo. Go on, Rollo. Halt. Oh. Oh. Come on, come on, come. Peter. Was ist denn los, Stachel? I think this piano is out of tune. You're an idiot, Stachel. This is no piano. This is an old soap box. Throw it out with the rest of the rubbish. Yeah, yeah. Come, come. <laughs> I told you to throw this rubbish out. He says that the dustman will not take it away unless we put it in the big black plastic bag, sir. <laughs> so, very well. Have it chopped up for firewood or something? No. No? Although, although, I have it here. You escaped me once, I think, but not twice. Charlie? <laughs> the house game. No one is ever to try and escape dressed as a grand piano again. Is that quite clear? <laughs> Lock him away. <laughs> J. 
Charlie, welcome home. Very nice try indeed, Charlie. Hard lines, man. Very hard lines. Sit the top down. Sir? Yes? There is another way. Hmm. Uh, carry on, Miracle. Have you ever noticed how an ordinary army greatcoat is incredibly similar in both colour and design to a Churchill tank? <laughs> no? Good. Well, nor had I. And that got me thinking. So I started off with this, and I ended up with... This. God. Gentlemen, meet Gertie the woman. Miracle. Miracle, is that you? You've... <laughs> You've changed, Miracle. Gertie, Kiriakin. Gertie. That's my new identity, at least until this show's over. You see, sir, I got to thinking about what the last thing Jerry would expect to see going through that gate. The Churchill tank. Exactly, sir. But what's the second to last thing he'd expect to see? A Churchill tank driven by a woman, of course, yes. Not on, sir. So I came up with Gertie. The only trouble is that no matter how I work it, my tank still looks like a piano. <laughs> sir, what's to stop? What's to stop Miracle and I going to bed together right now? <laughs> yes. Uh, carry on, Miracle. Or rather, Gertie. I can see this is going to take some getting used to. Well, you see, my main problem was tool, sir. As you know, I gathered up all the old pieces of fluffy little punk holes, cotton reels and such to make a hammer with. But all I could come up with was, uh, was this. And it's really jolly clumsy for bashing things in with. I said, does that thing work? Yes, of course. Well then, what's to stop, what's to stop Miracle and I going to bed together right now? <laughs> Quick, create a diversion. Why? Well, I'm bored. Well, Jackie, I can't see there being any problems with your admission. What an extraordinarily clean student rail card you have. Now then, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, uh, my mother works for a large building society mm. saying good morning. <laughs> and my father works in a bank saying yes, which is something he likes to say. <laughs> Splendid. Splendid. And John, I must say that spanking new Barclays Bank student survival kit really looks jolly nice. What about you? <laughs> Well, uh, my mother recently changed her husband and managed to persuade all the other ladies at the cricket club to do the same. And my father has a certain smile, which means you know you'll always be welcome. Good, good. Uh, I noticed that your surname is Coverley. It's just my bank manager's called Coverley. It's no relation, is it? It's my uncle. Oh, is it? Oh. <laughs> my wife and I have been saving for some years now, and I think we both agreed that we're about ready to start our own business. Excuse me, you haven't been listening to a single word. Oh no, I don't listen. The cartoon Griffin does the listening. I just wait until you finish and then tell you to piss off. <laughs>